Welcome to Badminton World. This time around, we focus on one of the sport's giant nations, Malaysia. So prepare yourself for insights on how their world-class badminton players are made, their mission to capture their first ever gold medal at the 2012 London Olympic Games, plus an up-close and personal chat with one of their best players, all in Malaysia. World this month puts a spotlight on Malaysia, a country whose badminton history runs deep, so deep that you can find people all around the country playing the sport. The old lady in the neighborhood, little kids, basically everyone. Competitively, the country has groomed some of the best in the world and have won the revered Thomas Cup several times, first as Malaya, then as an independent Malaysia. Badminton, just like any professional sport in the world, creates tremendous career potential for those who are not just talented, but also passionate, dedicated, and committed. Representing his or her country is a badminton player's main goal, being a national hero whilst flying the country's flag in the international arena. Riches and glamour await those who make it big, like those enjoyed by the current world number one, Lee Chong Wei. But how has Malaysia been able to be recognized as one of the great badminton nations? Let's hear from the various institutions responsible for the development of the sport in Malaysia. Uh, I think for us in uh, Badminton Association of Malaysia, we would like to think that uh, badminton is indeed a big sport. Huh? Uh, this could be seen by when we organize events, huh? whether it's an international event or a local event. Even in a lo local event, which we organize our junior event, which we usually have it in our office in Stadium Juara, you can see there are a lot of people coming to watch. And most of the time, the stadium is fairly packed with people. We would like to think that uh, badminton is indeed a uh, number one sport in the country, la, in that sense. Yeah. And it shows, as today, some of the top international shuttlers are Malaysians. I think we, we are proud to have uh, a few international players who are doing very well in the world ranking, uh, the world ranking. and uh, these players seem to have a uh, great following even in uh, local, among the local fans and even overseas fans. I think one of them, as you all know, uh, Dr. Lee Chong Wei, uh, he's not only very popular here, I was told when he was in China when he arrived at the airport, uh, thousands of fans just waiting for him at the airport and we are talking about airport in China. You know? And they are not about to rest on their laurels. We, there are a few areas that we look into besides the development of the sports. We also look at ways how we can raise money for the association. We also like to think that we are, we are also good in organizing events. And today, events are no more like just organizing events for the sake of organizing. Events today can be like a product itself and how we want to market the product and how we market the event and elevate the event to a higher level. So uh, I would like to think that uh, BM is now a body that runs professionally. It seems that BAM and Malaysia hasn't been all that shabby when it comes to badminton success. Here's a list of Malaysia's highest achievements on court. Aside from the national governing body, Malaysia has also seen a growth in private training academies, which actually have a different approach to the BAM. One of the more prominent private academies is the Kuala Lumpur Racket Club, where some of the world's best players and coaches ply their trade. There must be a, of course, there must be a difference between BM training and club training. And this club training is uh, considered like a professional uh, training. They're slightly different, you know. Normally in BAM, you train uh, three hours or uh, 
in the morning, three hours or four hours in the evening. But in KIC, we we change the, the system whereby two in the morning, two in the evening. So in the uh, in the morning, basically we will do some uh, so development. Yeah? In the evening, we will do some uh, jogging, running, or weight training. Although working out of the national system, KLRC is still producing some pretty outstanding players. It's also obvious, as in any sport, that a good youth development program is needed to spawn great players. Malaysia is unique in the sense that the government has special project schools to help nurture young badminton talent, like the Bukit Jalil Sports School, opened in 1996, as the country's first sports school. For 17-year-old Evelyn, a day in the life of a student at SSPJ is always interesting. We normally wake up at 6, then we get prepared to, for training at 7. Start at seven. Then after training for one and out an hour, we come back to school to get prepared for classes that start at nine thirty. Mm, at that time, maybe very tiring, but we keep on going. We know that studies also that important. Then after that, we finish school at two forty. Then, after preparing, we go for training, court training, at 3 o'clock. Uh, we finish about uh, at 6, then reach school about 7. After the bathing, then after dinner, we still have night class, at, we start at 8.30. After one and a half hour, we finish our night class. Then. That's our time to rest at night. That's our daily routine. Their training is extremely difficult and not the same as normal students. They need to be strong mentally. I think it's quite, it's quite, it's quite normal because we've been here for three years. So for the first year it was quite tough. Now it's quite, it's quite like, uh, it's like. It's like a daily routine for us every day, so it's quite, it's quite normal, it's not tiring. If they don't train as they do, they won't value the hardship of badminton. They must understand the hardships and the sacrifices that need to be made. Without sacrifice, there won't be results. Here are some of SSBJ's top products who so far have been enjoying a relative amount of international success. Badminton. No sport comes close. Before we head for a break, here's a little question for you. What role can a balloon play in badminton? Coming up next, we take a look at the Road to London 2012 and most importantly, Malaysia's first gold medal hope. So stay tuned to Badminton World. Hi, I'm Sun Naiwal and you are watching Badminton World. Welcome back to Badminton World. Did you have a think on our trivia question before the break? The answer is simple. Balloons can help players learn balance and control. Take a look at how they're used in BWF school program. Shuttle time. First, pupils should be given the opportunity to control a balloon with their racket hand working alone. Then, as shown here, let them work in pairs to control the direction of the balloon using only their racket hand. Basics, basics, basics. You can't avoid basic training if you want to be a good player. Log on to bwfshuttletime.com to find out how the BWF Schools program is bringing badminton to a school near you. And I think there's a big gap in, there's not many international federations that have actually written uh, programs for sp specifically for schools. And Shuttle Time consists not only of lesson plans, but a very, um, a very nice, short, concise course to teach teachers 
how to deliver a fun experience of badminton. So we're not trying to make the teachers into badminton coaches, uh, we're just trying to give them enough knowledge to deliver a badminton session that's fun for the kids, that make the kids want to come back and play badminton. We're back with our Malaysian story and this time we're going to look at the country's preparations for the 2012 London Olympic Games later this year. Malaysia may have a glorious history in badminton with the country's players having won the Thomas Cup and a collection of major titles, but the one elusive title missing from Malaysia's badminton collection is an Olympic gold medal. I think for, for sports, uh, we all know that the uh, Olympic is considered the apex, uh, that is the, the highest uh, event for any sports. Olympic is something that all sportsmen dream about. Uh, most players dream of playing in, in uh, the Olympics. Uh, some sportsmen even dream of winning the Olympics. So uh, for us, we find that uh, Olympic is definitely the highest event. And def definitely we, we have not won any Olympic gold medal before, whether it's in badminton or in any other sports. The gold medal has remained elusive, so definitely Badminton Association of Malaysia is rather serious in wanting to chase for that gold medal. And we actually have uh, set our program uh, even four years ago uh, in, in ensuring that we are able to uh, win the gold medal. And definitely we are very serious this time. Uh, and of course, we have players like Natuli Chongwe who and Tan in the men's doubles, who they remain our best bet for the chase of the gold medal. And we are definitely working very hard towards achieving our goal. The BAM has even declared that the main priority this year is to get an Olympic gold over and above the prestigious Thomas Cup. Even the sport's biggest corporate sponsors like Maybank are in full support. If you put yourself in the shuttle's shoes, I think winning the Olympic gold itself it's priceless. Winning the Olympic goal itself supersedes any sort of financial rewards you know, that you can offer the players. So I think there's a lot of sense of pride in winning that goal. It's something that has been elusive to us and that we have a strong desire to go out there and get it and if these shuttles bring it back, I think that will be the greatest reward they can have. Any other incentive is just an extra small bonus, if anything. And there's no denying the fact that Maybank themselves are big proponents of badminton in Malaysia. It is actually quite evident that uh, badminton is one of those sports where we as Asians can really excel in. Yeah, we stand a good chance in at least carving our name in the global arena with these sports of badminton. Because as Asians, we stand a good chance at excelling in badminton. Not just Malaysia, but across the region, you find that the Asian players generally do well in badminton. We even spoke to a couple of Malaysian legends to see what they thought of the country's chances in London this coming July. I can tell, okay, see, Ling Tan already won so many times, okay? I still, Chong Wei haven't won anything yet, so win anything yet, especially Olympic. So I think he, he still, for that, it's just not... Oh, not far away, just a few months only. I hope he can maintain himself and still, uh, you know, he got a chance to win this Olympic because uh, I feel that he's, uh, he's still, now his form is still good. I think, I think we need to have a more overall, uh, I mean, how to say, the strength of the players. You know? We have to have a, a equal strength in all departments, uh, not only uh, for one, only one singles or only one double, we need to have at least uh, two singles or two doubles equally strong that can challenge the, the rest of the world. So then we can have a much better chance. The Malaysian shuttlers are clearly carrying the hopes of an entire nation. Even a fan club was recently launched called the I Support Dato Lee Chong Wei Golden Road to London Movement. It remains to be seen if the Malaysian shuttlers can deliver under such intense pressure. I hope to see Malaysia win an Olympics gold medal in my lifetime. Lee Chong Wei's fighting words need to go down well with his fellow Malaysians, whose hopes he carries on his shoulders. Badminton. No sport comes close. 
Coming up on Badminton World after the break, we meet up with one of Malaysia's men's double stars, Ku Kian Kiet, as he shares with us his secrets to having good hair. Stay tuned to Badminton World. Hi, I'm Ku Kian Kiet. You're watching Badminton World. In Japan overcame the odds in a 2-0 deficit to stun China in the final of the Uber Cup qualifiers in Macau. Minatsu Mitani scored the winning point when she beat former world champion Wang Lin 21-19, 21-14 to cap a memorable fight back for the five-time champions. South Korea claimed the last ticket to the Thomas Cup finals when they finished fifth. They missed out on an automatic berth to China after suffering two defeats, but swept the fifth to eighth playoffs by beating Taipei 3-2. Thailand 4-1 and India 3-2. So from the Asian qualifiers, it's China, Japan, Indonesia and Malaysia that are heading to Wuhan. Over at the European Team Championships, it was Denmark v Germany in the men's and women's with the Danish men capping a perfect tournament by beating Germany 3-0. Germany, however, got their revenge in the women's final where the once invincible Danes had no answer to their opponent's attack prowess. Both are through with Holland who clinched the last automatic Uber Cup slot when they beat Russia 3-1. Traditional Oceania powerhouses Australia and New Zealand split the race to qualify for the Thomas and Uber Cups, with the Kiwis taking the sole ticket on offer for the Thomas Cup and the Aussies winning their berth to the Uber Cup. The United States have also qualified for the finals in Wuhan after winning the Pan Am qualifiers. Their encounter with Canada was a final of sorts and the teams didn't disappoint, with some great action on the courts before the United States carved out a narrow 3-2 victory to earn their ticket to China. The only slots left now are from the African qualifiers, then the stage is set for May. Meanwhile, Asiata Group Berhad, one of Asia's largest telecommunications companies, has announced together with the Badminton Asia Confederation and Total Sports Asia, the world's highest prize money team event boasting a prize purse of 1 million US dollars. The Asiata Cup will feature eight teams from six countries participating over a four-week period. Fighting it out are Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Singapore, Vietnam and the Philippines. Datuk Sri Jamaluddin Ibrahim, the president and group CEO of Asiata Group, was delighted to formally announce the tournament recently in Kuala Lumpur. From one of the top tournaments in the world, we now take a look at the top players based on the latest BWF World Rankings. If you want more information, you can visit the BWF's official website. Serious, quiet and arrogant on the court. That's how Kuken Kiet, Malaysia's number one men's double star, is seen in the eyes of his opponents. But how is he off the court? Actually, he, many, many of my friends telling me that um, when I'm in court, I'm kind of like arrogant and cool. <laughs> I don't know about that, I got no comment because I never see myself on TV and when I'm off court, I think that I'm kind of a friendly guy. Um, those who have started making friends with me, then I'll chat a little bit more, but with strangers, I think I'll be a bit shy. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, some people have labelled uh, Ken Cat as not only arrogant, flamboyant and he plays to the gallery. I think, um, in general, any, in any sports, we need stars who can entertain, who can appeal to the crowd, who can be a factor in, uh, as a crowd, crowd pulling factor. And I think um, Ken Cat fits the bill. When it comes to badminton in court, I think this is my career and badminton is kind of like a psycho game as well. You need to be fear, you need to be confident, you need to be arrogant to make yourself, to make your opponent to scared of you, you know, like, you don't show that your lack of confidence, if you have that kind of feeling in court, you will, I mean like your opponent will, will, will getting more confidence than you, so I'll just be myself, I train, like, I start train to be serious, like, when I'm training, I start to be serious and when I'm, when I'm done, I can be very, very happy-go-lucky. I think uh, if based on uh, what, what you see on TV and uh, where you play, it's a totally different person that uh, is out, off the court. People will think he's quite a uh, stylist, or, but outside he's a very nice guy and uh, he likes to joke. 
this what is uh this, this what about who can get it the apparent joker also has a liking for cars <sighs> uh i have owned i don't know how many like four five cars but now i'm driving bmw e92 335 for a guy i think uh, car is no is always is always you know their favorite and then it's their hobbies as well I don't think there is any limit for, for, for living a car. And a pension for stylish haircuts too. Normally, four to five weeks, four to five weeks, he will come for a haircut. He'd like to try new things, like new hairstyle. You know, he loves fashion a lot. No, seriously, um, actually, I don't really care like, when I'm in, I'm in the court. I do care about when I'm off court, actually. So, when I have a haircut, when I'm in court, I just, I just set it up. Like, just doesn't want to look messy, but I will be more details and neat when I'm in. I mean, when I'm out, out of court. But don't be fooled. As happy-go-lucky and stylish as he is, badminton is no laughing matter for him. Ku, along with his partner Tan Boon Hyong, are seated in the top 10 of the world and have won gold medals at the Asian Games and Commonwealth Games, to name just a few tournaments. On the court, whenever we're playing in tournaments, he has a never-say-die attitude. And he set his sights on doing his best at the London Olympics come this July. I think for every athlete, everyone is targeting Olympics, as well as us. Me and Tan really need to show some improvement before this Olympics in order, in order to show that we are really can achieve a single, I mean a medal, no matter it's gold, silver or bronze. So we really work hard on it. We're trying to make it, make it back. So this few months is kind of suffer for me as well. Basketball player Kobe Bryant because I think because of their height and their ability is seriously amazing because of their height and the ability can match with their height is kind of hard per match. Oh my god, I, I never thought of that. Uh, it depends on what game, what kind of game that you're playing. Maybe you're playing speed and power or attacking games. I think you need more like maybe. Of course, more than one dozen, I think. If you're, if you're playing an uh, attacking game, if you're playing a slow game, I think one dozen or maybe 13, 14 shuttercocks would be fine. Oh, single player, I mean. Mm, I think I... I think I want to beat Ling Dan. If I can, but because... I think, I mean, like everyone know that he is kind of a legend as well. I can say that he won every single titles. Um, it's kind of proud if you can win him. Yeah, Jessica Alba, because I think she's kind of sporty, sporty, hot like those, and she's quite cool. Those really, really kind of sweetness that she had. Badminton. No sport comes close. So far, the Austin BWF World Super Series has played out in Korea and Malaysia. Next up will be the Yonex All England Badminton Championship in Birmingham before the Yonex Sunrise India Open, which is the last event to qualify for the London Olympics in July. Once again, visit BWF's official website for more details. Time now for this month's selected Super Series moment, Denmark's women's doubles clinching the winner at the Maybank Malaysia Open 2012. Also, if you have a favourite Super Series moment of your own, show us. Send it over to badmintonworld at totalsportasia.com. So that's it for this episode of Badminton World. Next month, we dissect the long-standing rivalry between Asia and Europe. Why are these two regions so dominant on the world badminton stage? And is one region always more dominant than the other? Find out with us. Till then, remember, Badminton World, it's the world we know.